Okay, I'm ready. First John 4.21 And this commandment we have from we have from him. Whosoever loves God must also love his brother. Leviticus 19.18 Forget about the wrong things people do to you and don't try to get even. Love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. And number three, Matthew 2540 the king will answer them I can guarantee this truth whatever you did for one of my brothers or sisters no matter how unimportant they seemed you did for me number four is Matthew 7 12 so whatever you wish that others would do to you do also to them for this is the law and the prophets. Number five in, in Romans thirteen eighteen. In Romans thirteen eight through ten, owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments: you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, and love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. There you go, buddy. Okay, now, thank you, thank you to to my granny who read those passages for us. Chapter 4. Dear brothers and sisters, I love you and long to see you, for you are my joy and the reward for my work. So please stay true to the Lord, my dear friends. And now I want to plead with those two women, Euodia and Syntyche. Please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. And I ask you, my true teammate, to help these women. For they worked hard with me in telling others the good news. And they worked with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are written in the book of life. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, let me say one more thing as I close this letter. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned from me and heard from me and saw me doing, and the God of peace will be with you. How grateful I am and how I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but for a while you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to get along happily whether I have much or little. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. 
I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything with the help of Christ who gives me the strength I need. But even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. As you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I brought you the good... Chapter 6. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was walking through some grain fields, his disciples broke off heads of wheat, rubbed off the husks in their hands, and ate the grains. But some Pharisees said, You shouldn't be doing that. It's against the law to work by harvesting grain on the Sabbath. Jesus replied, Haven't you ever read in the scriptures what King David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God, ate the special bread reserved for the priests alone, and then gave some to his friends. That was breaking the law too. And Jesus added, I, the Son of Man, am master even of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath day, a man with a deformed right hand was in the synagogue while Jesus was teaching. The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees watched closely to see whether Jesus would heal the man on the Sabbath because they were eager to find some legal charge to bring against him. But Jesus knew their thoughts. He said to the man with the deformed hand, Come and stand here where everyone can see. So the man came forward. Then Jesus said to his critics, I have a question for you. Is it legal to do good deeds on the Sabbath, or is it a day for doing harm? Is this a day to save life or to destroy it? He looked around at them one by one and then said to the man, Reach out your hand. The man reached out his hand and it became normal again. At this, the enemies of Jesus were wild with rage and began to discuss what to do with him. One day soon afterward, Jesus went to a mountain to pray and he prayed to God all night. At daybreak, he called together all of his disciples and chose 12 of them to be apostles. Here are their names. Simon, he also called him Peter, Andrew, Peter's brother, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, son of James, Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. When they came down the slopes of the mountain, the disciples stood with Jesus on a large level area surrounded by many of his followers and by the crowds. There were people from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from as far north as the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed, and Jesus cast out many evil spirits. Everyone was trying to touch him because healing power went out from him, and they were all cured. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and said, God blesses you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is given to you. God blesses you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. God blesses you who weep now, for the time will come when you will laugh with joy. God blesses you who are hated and excluded and mocked and cursed, because you are identified with me, the Son of Man. When that happens, rejoice. Yes, leap for joy, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were also treated that way by your ancestors. What sorrows await you who are rich, for you have your only happiness now. What sorrows await you who are satisfied and prosperous now, for a time of awful hunger is before you. What sorrows await you who laugh carelessly, for your laughing will turn to mourning and sorrow. What sorrows await you who are praised by the crowds, for their ancestors also praised false prophets. But if you are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for the happiness of those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt also. Give what you have to anyone who asks you for it. And when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. Do for others as you would like them to do for you. Do you think you deserve credit merely for loving those who love you? Even the sinners do that. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, is that so wonderful? 
Even sinners do that much. And if you lend money only to those who can repay you, what good is that? Even sinners will lend to their own kind for a full return. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them. And don't be concerned that they might not repay. Then your reward from heaven will be very great, and you will truly be acting as children of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and to those who are wicked. You must be compassionate just as your Father is compassionate. Stop judging others and you will not be judged. Stop criticizing others or it will all come back on you. If you forgive others, you will be forgiven. If you give, you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full measure, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more and running over. Whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. Then Jesus gave the following illustration. What good is it for one blind person to lead a... Chapter 7. Stop judging others, and you will not be judged, for others will treat you as you treat them. Whatever measure you use in judging others, it will be used to measure how you are judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite, first get rid of the log from your own eye then perhaps you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't give what is holy to unholy people. Don't give pearls to swine. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. Keep on asking, and you will be given what you ask for. Keep on looking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds and the door is open to everyone who knocks. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. If you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? Do for others what you would like them to do for you. This is a summary of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. You can enter God's kingdom only. Chapter 9. Jesus went on to say, I assure you that some of you standing here right now will not die before you see the kingdom of God arrive in great power. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John to the top of a mountain. No one else was there. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance changed, and his clothing became dazzling white, far whiter than any earthly process could ever make it. Then Elijah and Moses appeared and began talking with Jesus. Teacher, Peter exclaimed, this is wonderful. We will make three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't really know what to say, for they were all terribly afraid. Then a cloud came over them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly they looked around, and Moses and Elijah were gone, and only Jesus was with them. As they descended the mountainside, he told them not to tell anyone what they had seen until he, the Son of Man, had risen from the dead. So they kept it to themselves, but they often asked each other what he meant by rising from the dead. Now they began asking him, Why do the teachers of religious law insist that Elijah must return before the Messiah comes? Jesus responded, Elijah is indeed coming first to set everything in order. Why then is it written in the scriptures that the Son of Man must suffer and be treated with utter contempt? But I tell you, Elijah has already come and he was badly mistreated, just as the scriptures predicted. At the foot of the mountain, they found a great crowd surrounding the other disciples, as some teachers of religious law were arguing with them. The crowd watched Jesus in awe as he came toward them, and then they ran to greet him. 
What is all this arguing about, he asked. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son for you to heal him. He can't speak because he's possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever this evil spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground and makes him foam at the mouth and grind his teeth and become rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, and they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, You faithless people, how long must I be with you until you believe? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, Since he was very small. The, the evil spirit often makes him fall into the fire or into water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us. Do something if you can. What do you mean, if I can? Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly replied, I do believe, but help me not to doubt. When Jesus saw that the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Spirit of deafness and muteness, he said, I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy lay there motionless and he appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd. He's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet and he stood up. Afterward, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, Why? Chapter 11. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the towns of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them, and as soon as you enter it, you will see a colt tied there that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say, the Lord needs it and will return it soon. The two disciples left and found the colt standing in the street, tied outside a house. As they were untying it, some bystanders demanded, What are you doing untying that colt? They said what Jesus had told them to say, and they were permitted to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it, and he sat on it. Many in the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of Jesus, and others cut leafy branches in the fields and spread them along the way. He was in the center of the procession, and the crowds all around him were shouting, Praise God! Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Bless the coming kingdom of our ancestor David! Praise God in highest heaven! So Jesus came to Jerusalem and went into the temple. He looked around carefully at everything, and then he left because it was late in the afternoon. Then he went out to Bethany with the twelve disciples. The next morning, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus felt hungry. He noticed a fig tree a little way off that was in full leaf, so he went over to see if he could find any figs on it. But there were only leaves because it was too early in the season for fruit. Then Jesus said to the tree, May no one ever eat your fruit again. And the disciples heard him say it. When they arrived back in Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out the merchants and their customers. He knocked over the tables of the money changers and the stalls of those selling doves, and he stopped everyone from bringing in merchandise. He taught them, The scriptures declare, My temple will be called a place of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. When the leading priests and teachers of religious law heard what Jesus had done, they began planning how to kill him. But they were afraid of him because the people were so enthusiastic about Jesus' teaching. That evening, Jesus and the disciples left the city. The next morning, as they passed by the fig tree he had cursed, the disciples noticed it was withered from the roots. Peter remembered what Jesus had said to the tree on the previous day and exclaimed, Look, teacher, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Then Jesus said to the disciples, Have faith in God. I assure you that you can say to this mountain, May God lift you up and throw you into the sea, and your command will be obeyed. All that's required is that you really believe, and do not doubt in your heart. Listen to me. You can pray for anything, and if you believe, you will have it. 
But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against, so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. By this time they had arrived in Jerusalem at Whenever you pray, I strongly urge you, read, read Isaiah 54 with, with John 8, and after watching this video and reading those passages, Pray to always love people and ask ask the Lord, ask him to never let you hate, ask him to never let you hate anyone at all for any reason, and ask him to not let you yield to temptation, and ask him to always help you be kind, and ask him to help you to always want to be kind. And always, always remember, no need to thank me. I am I am here to help you and I both as much as I can but please like share and subscribe thank you very much